Welcome to a nursing in-service on cardiac contusion. My name is Michael McGonigal. I'm the Director of Trauma Services at Regents Hospital, a Level 1 Adult Trauma Center and a Level 1 Pediatric Trauma Center located in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'd like to introduce you to a new series of trauma nursing in-services. This is uh, number one. And today's topic will be cardiac contusion. Cardiac contusion is an entity that is seen only uh, rarely, which is a very fortunate thing. The usual mechanism is extreme blunt force. It usually takes a significant head-on component, such as car crash, but there are a number of other mechanisms that can do this. This is a, a diagram of the heart and this shows the normal appearance of it and you can see there's a lot of fatty tissue that can be applied to it. This is actually heart muscle right in this area and this is the area that is typically in contact with the inside front of the chest wall and you can see that this is the area that has been contused and it has a darker bruised appearance which is what this problem is. There are a number of common mechanisms bearing in mind that this is an uncommon problem. One thing that you can see is a direct blow, and uh, it cannot be done with fists, maybe by stomping someone on the chest, or typically it's an assault using a blunt object such as a baseball bat that can be used to strike the front of the chest. We do see it from time to time in sports injuries, and this usually requires a full tackle, such as football, rugby, uh, occasionally in hockey as well, although the padding is pretty good there. We do see it in falls, and it does not require a fall onto the chest. Uh, these patients can also fall onto their feet, and uh, they'll strike hard enough so that the heart will actually move a little bit with inside the chest and strike the inside uh, of the uh, anterior chest. Horseback riders or other people like farmers who may be exposed to animals can sustain kicks to the chest, which can certainly deliver a cardiac contusion. And then finally, the acceleration and deceleration injury. And this is the most common <clears throat> deceleration injury in a car crash where the occupants are thrown against the steering wheel or against their shoulder restraint. You can occasionally see this as an acceleration injury, meaning that the car is at rest and is struck by another, which sets it into a violent motion. And this can also result in the uh, occupants of the car striking their chest against something. I really want to drive home that cardiac contusion is rare. And patients who do not have significant pain or tenderness in their chest wall cannot have a myocardial contusion. We do see it in patients who have sternal fracture. This obviously results in pain, but it is a uh, indicator that there was an extreme amount of force applied to the chest, so much so that the sternum broke and the energy can then be transmitted directly to what is underneath, and that is the heart. Patients who come into the emergency department after an appropriate mechanism who have early arrhythmias um, should be suspected as having a cardiac contusion, especially younger patients where you would not uh, assume that they would have any kind of arrhythmia. Occasionally we will see older patients who come in with anginal pain that does not respond to nitroglycerin and again coupled with the appropriate mechanism this may indicate a cardiac contusion. The diagnosis is difficult. The things that we typically use in order to make this diagnosis just don't work very well. EKG is nonspecific. What that means is that there are lots of arrhythmias that can be seen and most of them don't mean anything. Most of them are not important. The most common arrhythmia that we see with a cardiac contusion is sinus tachycardia. Most trauma patients, especially major trauma patients who come into your emergency department will have sinus tachycardia. They may have some blood loss. They may have pain that is not well controlled. They may have anxiety because they forgot to make their uh, car insurance payment and now their car is a total loss and they still owe money on it. Enzymes are another thing that are typically used in diagnosing cardiac problems, but they do not work for myocardial contusion. There are many cases where we'll see patients who have um, a normal enzymes, but they absolutely do have a cardiac contusion and vice versa, where they have highly elevated enzymes and no evidence of contusion at all. 
the enzymes, the enzyme pattern, if they do show up, are different from a, an MI pattern in that with an MI they slowly peak over a 24 to 36 hour period, whereas in cardiac contusion they peak immediately on impact and, and then drop off very quickly. It is not recommended that you obtain these enzymes. There are certain scans that can be done that look at cardiac function. Uh, some of them are nuclear medicine scans, some of them are other gated scans, and these are not very helpful. Finally, echocardiogram can be helpful if these patients have uh, evidence of congestive failure because it can show if they have wall motion abnormalities. There are two clinical problems that we worry about when patients have a myocardial contusion. The first is arrhythmia and the second is heart failure. The arrhythmias that we worry about are those that might degenerate into something that would be life-threatening like V-fib or VTAC. So we are worried about ventricular arrhythmias, specifically premature ventricular contractions. If they are going to manifest themselves, and if they are going to be a problem, they occur during the first few hours in the emergency department. So if a trauma patient comes in and they do have an appropriate mechanism, they have some chest wall tenderness, but they never show any arrhythmias and they never show any evidence of heart failure, then they do not have a myocardial contusion. Nursing management is fairly straightforward. First, keep in mind that a true contusion is very rare. But what you need to do is make sure that these patients are on telemetry and watch for and report any arrhythmias that arise, especially ones that are ventricular in origin. It is not needed and not indicated to get CK or troponins because, again, they do not correlate with injury and they do not change treatment. So if a physician in training wants to uh, order something like that, then you should definitely go up your chain of command because, again, it is not a needed test and it will not help in any way. If these patients do manifest arrhythmias or if they start to show pump failure, then they need to be transferred to the intensive care unit for closer monitoring and possible administration of um, uh, inotropes or antiarrhythmic agents. If you have any comments, questions, or you'd like to see uh, additional materials on uh, any particular trauma-related topics, uh, you can certainly contact me using Facebook. Uh, I do monitor Twitter, and I post uh, uh, blog entries on trauma-related things at regionstraumapro.com. You can reach me on Twitter using Regions Trauma, and generally anything I put out there has a Trauma Pro hashtag associated with it. Thanks for participating in this uh, webcast. And if again, if you do have any particular subject, subjects that you are interested in hearing, please do let me know, and I will make sure to uh, uh, do up a, a, an in-service uh, so that everybody can partake of it. Thank you very much.